Hello and welcome to the Ace Destroyer. Today is a special episode about the Battle of Maysine. On the 7th of June 1917, New Zealand forces attacked the village of Maysine. Here's what happened in a minute by minute overview. It was the second Anzac Corps task to take the village of Maysine and its ridge on which Maysine is located on. The New Zealanders, also known as Kiwis, started their attack at the Gabion farm located at the foot of the ridge in the valley of the river Douve. The objective for the New Zealanders was to take the village of Maysine. Maysine is a small village located on the Maysine Ridge, a dominating high ground which the Germans took in October 1914 and held ever since. But that was about to change. On the right flank of the New Zealanders was the 3rd Australian Division. This division had however been disorganised by a gas bombardment around midnight in the Black Street Wood. This gas bombardment resulted in 500 casualties for the Australians. Three ten in the morning. 19 out of 24 underground mines were detonated. Artillery opened up again after being silenced for a couple of minutes and laying down a huge barrage upon the German defenders of the Maysine Ridge. The artillery had been pounding the Germans for days. Once the attack started at 3.10 in the morning, the same time as the mine explosions, the New Zealanders jumped out of their trenches and ran up the ridge to secure the first part of the ridge, the stronghold called Ulan Trench. The Ulan Trench was a trench system packed with bunkers and machine gun nests. Two of the bunkers are still visible today. They now stand in front of the Maysine New Zealand Memorial. This trench provided the Germans an excellent view across the New Zealand trenches and also the jump off point of the attack. In order to take out the bunkers, small platoons were formed, armed with the Mills grenade and other weapons. Lewis machine guns would provide suppressive fire, whilst men armed with the Mills bomb would flank the bunkers and toss a grenade through the bunkers' back door. The New Zealanders had to luck that the previous artillery barrages had proven effective as the real opposition only came from a small number of pillboxes and the village itself. At 3.30, the German first line was captured, so New Zealand forces were now moving up towards the village of Maysine itself. At around 4 o'clock in the morning, Samuel Frickleton, of the 3rd Rifle Battalion, earned himself the Victoria Cross for his actions in the vicinity of the Maysine Church. He single-handedly knocked out two machine gun nests which were holding up the attack. He ran forward through the artillery barrage, knocked out both guns and returned back to the friendly lines despite getting wounded. Half past 4 Although the fighting now mainly took place in the village itself, the battle was far from over. Just before dawn, the Kiwis pushed through, mopping up the disorganised Germans. The Germans quickly regrouped and provided some stiff resistance by tossing grenades from the ruins and snipers were causing casualties to the New Zealanders. Almost every ruin was now a stronghold. Five o'clock in the morning, the German second line of resistance was taken. The Germans were now seriously losing their grip on the village. Five twenty in the morning. In the meantime, on the left flank, by the way, the Maysine Ridge Cemetery gives a good view on the former left flank. Now, on the left flank, members of the Cyclist Battalion cleared the way for the Otago Mounted Rifles, who would later take their positions to wreck aid the remaining German forces on the other side of the ridge. The Cyclists charged forward but were qu quickly pinned down by the multiple lines of barbed wire and longer range machine gun fire. They eventually managed to secure the flank. Like I said, the Otago Mounted Rifles would later take over their positions. On the far right, the Australians rapidly overran the German positions at the Bethlehem farm, 
clearing the path to the right of the New Zealanders. Seven o'clock in the morning, Maysin was in New Zealand hands. The Allies take the victory. The neighboring village, Zweitschate, was taken a half an hour later, at 7.30. Later in the day, the Australian 4th Division took over and pushed through. They continued to drive the Germans back the reverse slope. The first objective was taken. Now it was time for the second objective, the Osterferne line. The Germans were pushed out of the village and retreated off the ridge. Maysin was a huge success for the Allies and Maysin was also regarded by Douglas Haig as his best success in the war to date. This success was mostly due to the careful planning, lots of training, the underground mines and so on. It was not until the 8th of June that the area was consolidated and positions were sorted out. Maysin Ridge claimed 3,100 to 3,700 New Zealand casualties of which 700 killed in action. This was the S Destroyer. I hope you liked this little sort of documentary. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. Cheers!